everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Planet Nomads. And uh, you know what? It's always a good thing I do test recordings because uh, there was a big, like, 6 gig Windows 10 update, new features and whatever, which was a whole lot of nothing, but uh, for some reason I ended up resetting all my, um, my recording and playback settings in OBS. So I went to a test recording, I couldn't hear the game, couldn't hear myself. Which um, it's it's a good thing, mind you. But uh, anyways, yeah, we're up and running, and uh, yeah. So last episode, I worked on this thing, and this actually was surprisingly good. And what I've done is I actually got the air blades set up so they're the max hover height, and I turned the air, the switchboard off. So now when you go and turn it on, you can actually stand here, watch it stand up, and it lift all the way up. That's cool. The problem is, though, is when it gets up there, it's uh, it's almost like the center of mass itself is a little bit past this point here. So when I turn it off, it doesn't actually come back down on its own. I have to drive forward and then backwards and get the 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 momentum of the weight to pull it back down. So yeah, that's that. That's uh, it was a fun one. I definitely want to do a few more down the road, uh, trying to you know, work all the linkages out in my head because I don't sit down with a paper and a pen and actually, oh, down it comes. All right. Uh, I don't really work all this stuff out. I'm usually like plan it out and I have a pretty good memory when it comes to stuff like that. So I can work it out, but I do have the little red flyer here all loaded up, ready to go. I basically got everything I have. Uh, I even went to the train and took everything out of those containers. I have no frames and no plates left except for what's on me, so I'm hoping this is going to be enough. And I'm actually going to go and do this where the big base bus originally was, and I went and moved it. And uh, what I did before I dropped it back down is I locked the, uh, the rotating plates on the, the swing arms there for the wheels. Oh, it's so much better over here. And yeah, I got to that point and I couldn't drive it anymore. And that's because only like four of the wheels are touching the ground, so it doesn't have the torque to actually keep going. And that's why I had it so they, the wheels sort of swing, they sort of pivot. But I'm thinking this might be a big enough area to do this thing. So there's been a couple of game ideas I've been thinking about. And uh, one of them just happens to be sort of like, a, let me get out of here for a second. Uh, I've actually talked about this a few episodes ago, was uh, like a crane game. Uh, back in the old days, when I was a kid, we used to have this game, and some, sometimes in like the local ex exhibition here, or uh, sometimes in arcade, you would see it would like be like uh, one of those cabinet machines with glass, and you have all these little metal rusted cars in there, and this claw that came down and picked up these cars, and you dropped them into a hopper, and you reach a certain enough score and a certain time limit and you won something or a free game or whatever uh, but I've been sort of thinking about an idea like that and uh, it's going to be based off the, the ball dropper idea that uh, the ball loader, the little orange thing that picks up the balls and they use the hover pad to hold it in place combined with the, the tethered remote control that I had set up oh jeez, hang on, let me find out what episode that was all right, that was a close one. I almost missed it recording this part. Uh, yeah, it was episode 98. Uh, it was basically I made it uh, remote control art, remote control rover. It was a little four-wheel vehicle. It was driving over a ramp, pushing a ball around and stuff like that. And I had it all hooked up with a cable and chain, and I was way over there and driving around. And that was a good thing I checked my recording because I actually missed recording this part but anyways uh, this is going to be a little bit taller of a structure because I'm going to be using the chain and I want to have some slack on it uh, I have to basically build the structure build the chain down lift the whole thing up with the air blades and then build the field underneath it there's going to be some wiring we're going to be using and we'll call it pressure plates a pr pl pressure plate idea hooked up with a uh, four-way and switch. Just give me some lights and other some stuff like that. So, anyways, uh, let's let's have some fun here.
Okay, it's finally done. This actually took a lot longer to do than I thought. Uh, as probably should have been a little bit bigger than I thought, but I have tested my mechanic out a little bit, and it's actually good. It wasn't as bi big as it should have been because uh, the balls don't get launched out as far as they should. But this is what it is. It is a remote-controlled uh, sky crane, we'll call it. Uh, I have had to do a lot of tweaking on this, just why it's taken me three hours longer than I was expecting to do it. Uh, I'll explain the maze of switchboards in a minute. Uh, so what I have here is I have four hoppers set up. Uh, each hopper has a pressure plate. I'm going to call it a pressure plate, but it's basically just uh Oh, I never finished that one. Well, actually, finish this, finish this up. I'll actually finish this while I'm talking. Uh, they are basically seesaws, teeters, levers, whatever you want to call them. And they are balanced in such a way that when you have any weight on this end whatsoever, it drops down. And in this case, it could be the ball, it could be me, it could be anything really. It's only about a 10 kilometer difference. Now underneath, underneath, this is what I have. So the ball drops down onto here. And it's enough weight to push this down. I've set my stops and set my my counterweights and all that stuff. So when this comes down, these two switchboards here connect to those two switchboards over there. And then same with this one here. When this one drops down, the two switchboards here connect to those ones over there. And so when it pops up, they disconnect. Uh, now for the rest of the maze. Um, so the white the white lines are just lights. I have lights inside the hoppers, so when the ball's in there, it lights up, so you know you have a ball in there already. And that's just to keep track. There is actually a whole goal to this, and that is now where does it start? I think it starts right here. I actually have all four of these set up on an and loop, uh, and loop, and switch circuit, whatever. Basically, they're all in in line. So, in order for th those hover pads to get power, which are set to hover mode right now, as soon as all four of these pressure plates go down and all four of those switchboards connect, then all four of these hover pads will get power, and they will push the balls back out into play. So, it's basically like an automatic reset. Now, for this, I'll we'll head over to. 
head over to the cockpit and you can see the double lines of power. This is quite the extension cord I've had to make on this one. Uh, that switchboard there controls that hover pad there. So what it is, I have the, uh, the, green, the green power lines are the air blades going up. I've had to tweak these so many times. Uh, what I ended up doing is I just left these ones powered but the stabilization, stabilization is off. That's an auto save. Uh, stabilization's off. So uh, I can get the movement, but it doesn't want, doesn't lift. The problem I was having was it was always trying to lift this end with the rest of the chain. And with all these extra centers of mass, I think the air blades get confused and start doing weird things. But this seems to be where it needs to be, and that works. So that's the green line. That's constant power to the air blades. The blue line goes from that hover pad and then the same thing falls up the chain goes all the way up comes all the way over here goes across goes down the post all the way down to there over to there to that switchboard goes all the way back all the way up to get power yes it is a little confusing and then uh, the, the air blade the hover pads are actually getting power off this line here that's coming down I believe that back post and that's actually tied into the whole four pressure plate circuit. Uh, but it is getting dark, so I'm going to take a quick snooze, and then uh, I'll see if I can actually load up that last ball. I have tested this. It is actually working. Uh, I, like I said, I've been at this for so long. It's uh, I'm working on this for a bit of a surprise coming up, and I'm not going to name it give out any spoilers I'm sorry it's like almost midnight for me right now but there's uh, some surprise news coming up soon uh, don't know the exact details of it but it's gonna be soon and it's something you guys will recognize but uh, let me take a quick snooze and we'll check this out okay it is morning and probably gonna rain soon but that's fine uh, also too I put this button on the switchboard in a perfect spot so when you get in here and you're lined up where you need to be uh, it'd probably be better doing third person I was trying to figure out the best place to have the cockpit originally I had it up top but that was kind of hard but this isn't too bad I was trying to get in a spot where you could could actually do it from a first person view which is quite interesting I kind of like it but I also have that button so when you get out it's right there I don't know why I do that little bit of a jump, but I do. Uh, this is going to be a tricky one to line up. Well, actually, it should be fairly easy because I already had it loaded. Uh, the air blades, I'm not actually having them turn. They're, they're actually set to a strafe. I do have rotating plates everywhere, so, you know, it's not too worried about getting it tangled as long as I pay attention to where the hover pad is. And there we go, now it's loaded. So now we look for the light. So, can't quite see it, but there is a red light. A light in the red, light in the green, light in the yellow. So now, let's see if I can get it up to the blue one here. Make sure I'm going the right way. And I think that's lined up. Oh, look at that, it's like I've done this before. All right, let's see what happens. Uh-oh. Yeah. I might have to install another hover pad on there. One in the back to push it, like I did before. Come on, get out of there. Yeah, because that was the trouble I had with the other one. I was actually using uh, getting out of the cockpit to actually engage it. And I might actually do that. Because that ball's stuck in there. Let's go take a quick peek, shall we? Find out what the problem is. And that's all the problem is. It's just stuck in there. Alright, well, let's... Uh, See if we can nudge this back a little bit and throw a hover pad on the back. Uh, 
And there's the rare, just in queue, just on time. All right. Now I'm gonna keep recording on this, just in case it does decide to pop up. Uh, let's see here. I'm thinking. No, leave that on ground. But I think this one's gonna stay on, and then this will be the switched one. So, well, I haven't placed the switch one yet, but I will in a second. This is also gonna make it a little back heavy now, which could be an issue. But hey, just throw some more weight on it. Oh, that's that's the wrong color. We want red. All right, another hover pad, which is not here. A uh, good old shift click and. So now what was I going to do? I was going to do, this one was going to be constant power, oh, uh, okay, disconnect that, connect that, and this one goes there. So that's grounded, and that's going to be the hover mode. So now, now I should be able to actually get to work. Yeah, just lots of little fine tuning. It's not exactly a, well, it is technically a simple project, but it's not exactly the simplest to do. So I gotta back it up a little bit. That should be fine. Let's get out and hit the button. And there they go, all four of them pop out. That's exactly like what I planned. Uh, so yeah, they popped out, the pressure plates came back up, the lights turned off, which did, does a reset. So now I can go ahead if I wanted to and start gathering out my balls again and dropping them back in the chutes. But anyways, that's gonna be it for this episode. Uh, I gotta get this thing uh, rendered and uploaded. I'm actually quite impressed how it turned out I'm surprised it didn't freak out with all the hinges and probably the first game ever in Planet Nomads I could be wrong but I don't actually search videos and you know not everybody posts their creations and all that stuff but there we have it anyways thank you all for watching I hope you enjoyed if you did don't forget to leave me a like and I'll see you next time later